The humans' calloused hands expertly rewired the alien ship's overloaded circuits as the desperate Elysian crew watched in frightened awe, realizing humans alone could fix this ship stranded light years from home, or they'd all die in the unforgiving void of space. Jacob Miller awoke from his cryopod, head throbbing, still disoriented from the decades of frozen travel. He quickly shook off the grogginess, knowing he had to report for duty on the Elysian starship's bridge. The ESS Celestia was transporting 500 blue-skinned colonists to a new world, with Jacob as the only human aboard. He shuffled through the sleek corridors, the ship unusually quiet and still. Reaching the command deck, he found Rigel, the ship's four-armed captain, frantically manipulating control panels. The bridge crew looked terrified. Jacob, thank the cosmos you're here. Our fusion drive malfunctioned. We're dead in space, running out of power and air. My engineers can't fix it. This is beyond us, Rigel exclaimed, his center eye bloodshot with stress. You're saying none of your advanced Elysian technology can repair it. What about backup systems? Jacob asked, as he scanned the diagnostics on a hollow display. Fried, and the damage is strange, like the components were sabotaged, but that's impossible. Jacob clenched his jaw. Centuries of rigorous training and unorthodox problem-solving had prepared him for exactly this, when technology failed and ingenuity was the only option. I'll take a look, Captain. We're not dying out here. As he jogged to the engine bay, a cold sweat formed on Jacob's brow. Five hundred lives depended on him figuring this out, and if Rigel was right about sabotage, they were all in even more danger than he realized. Jacob burst into the engine room, greeted by a frantic Zaphod. The red-skinned engineer towered over him, anxiety radiating off him in waves. Jacob, thank the stars, we've tried everything. Our AI can't solve it. The magnetic containment destabilized and fried the power core. I don't know what to do, Zaphod said, his voice cracking. He gestured helplessly at the smoking wreckage of the once pristine reactor. Jacob rolled up his sleeves undaunted. He surveyed the damage, his mind already whirring with possibilities. Show me the schematics and backup systems. As he pored over the diagrams, an idea clicked. There, we bypass the wrecked components entirely and reroute to the redundancies. Jury rig it. What? That's not in any manual. The computer would have suggested that, Zaphod protested. Jacob grabbed a toolkit and dove into the guts of the ship. Sometimes the simplest solution is best. You can't always rely on fancy tech to innovate. Gotta get your hands dirty. Improvise. Zaphod watched, amazed, as the human rewired the ship with just basic tools and sheer ingenuity. Jacob's hands flew over the components, splicing and redirecting. Hours crawled by as they worked, sweat pouring down their faces, but Jacob didn't falter. With a final twist of his pliers, he connected the last circuit. The engines hummed to life, the lights blazed on. Zaphod gaped as cheers erupted over the comms from the bridge, you, you did it, I can't believe... Zaphod stammered. Jacob clapped him on the shoulder, grinning. Told you, simplest solution. Don't underestimate human creativity. As they headed back to the bridge, Jacob overheard Rigel praising him to the crew. Saved us all. Guess we were wrong about humans. They're more capable than we thought. Pride surged through Jacob, but he tamped it down. The journey to Kepler-452b had barely begun. He knew this was just the first of many challenges they would face. But now, the Elysians saw what one human could do, what he could offer. Jacob knew his skills would be put to the test out here, and he was ready. Days later, as the Celestia approached Kepler-452b, the crew was abuzz with excitement. They were so close to their new home. But the mood on the bridge turned tense, when the long-range sensors blared an alert. Captain, we've detected an unknown ship in orbit around the planet, the sensor operator reported, her voice tight. Rigel leaned forward in his command chair, frowning. On screen. The view screen flickered to life, revealing a menacing, angular craft bristling with weapons. It was unlike any ship the Elysians had encountered before. 
Yellow alert, Rigel ordered. Prep the weapons and raise shields. Jacob, I need you to analyze that ship. You're our resident expert on unorthodox thinking. Jacob stepped up to the tactical station. His brow furrowed as he examined the sensor data. He cross-referenced the alien ship's energy signatures and weapon emissions with the Elysian database and his knowledge of human military tech. The results painted a grim picture. Captain, that ship is heavily armed. Based on these readings, I'd say it outguns us, and the energy signature is consistent with known hostile species. We need to be careful, Jacob advised. Rigel nodded, his center eye narrowing. Understood. Helm approached slowly. Hail them. The comms officer opened a channel. Unknown vessel, this is the ESS Celestia. We are on a peaceful mission. Please identify yourself. A harsh clicking voice filled the bridge, the universal translator struggling to keep up. Elysian ship, we are the Zorgons. You have violated our territory. Surrender your vessel and prepare to be boarded. Resist and you will be destroyed. Rigel bristled, his hands clenching. Zorgons, we have no hostile intentions. We are simply passing through on our way to colonize an uninhabited world. Let us go in peace. The grating laugh crackled through the speakers. Foolish Elysians, you have no choice. Surrender or die. Rigel cut the transmission, his face grim. Red alert. Power up weapons and prepare for combat. We're not going down without a fight. As the crew scrambled to battle stations, Jacob pulled Rigel aside. Captain, I have an idea. We can't beat them in a straight fight, but we don't have to. I say we teleport a strike team to their ship, sabotage it from the inside, catch them off guard. Rigel hesitated, torn between his military instincts and his trust in Jacob's unconventional tactics. He had seen what the human could do, but this was beyond risky. Zaford stepped forward, placing a hand on Jacob's shoulder. I'm with Jacob. He hasn't steered us wrong yet. I say we do it. Rigel sighed, then nodded. All right, Jacob, Zaphod, gather your team and get to the teleporter, but be careful. We're counting on you. Minutes later, Jacob, Zaphod, and a squad of Elysian commandos materialized on the Zorgon Bridge, weapons drawn. The insectoid aliens chittered in shock, reaching for their own blasters, but the Elysians were faster. Plasma bolts filled the air as the two sides clashed. Jacob and Zaphod fought back to back, covering each other as they pushed forward. A Zorgon warrior lunged at Jacob, pincers snapping. Jacob ducked, then slammed his rifle butt into the creature's head, sending it reeling. Zaphod finished it off with a well-placed shot. Jacob, the power core, Zaphod shouted over the chaos. Jacob nodded, already sprinting towards the engineering section. A pair of Zorgons moved to block his path, but Zaphod was there, his blaster spitting fire. The aliens fell, and Jacob leaped over their twitching bodies. He burst into the reactor room, his eyes widening at the pulsing, sickly green core. Alarms blared as he rushed to the control panel, his fingers flying over the unfamiliar controls. He had to shut it down. But how? Then he saw it. A vulnerability in the containment field, a flaw in the design. With a grim smile, Jacob drew his sidearm and fired, the plasma bolt slamming into the weak point. The core sputtered, then went dark. The lights died and the ship shuddered. He had done it. Jacob sprinted back to the others, finding them mopping up the last of the Zorgons. Zaphod grinned at him, his face streaked with sweat and alien blood. You did it, Jacob. I never doubted you for a second, the engineer said, clasping Jacob's hand. Together the strike team fought their way back to the teleportation point. Zorgons hot on their heels, but they made it the Elysian ship snatching them away in a burst of light. As they rematerialized on the Celestia, the crew erupted into cheers. On the view screen, the Zorgon ship drifted, powerless and defeated. Rigel strode forward, grasping Jacob's shoulder. You saved us all, Jacob. I was wrong to doubt you. You're not just an asset, you're a true friend. Jacob smiled, feeling a sense of belonging he had never known before. He had found his place among the stars, fighting alongside the Elysians, and he knew that together they could face whatever challenges lay ahead. As the Celestia settled into orbit around Kepler 452b, Jacob stood on the bridge, 
transfixed by the view on the main screen. Oceans of deep blue stretched across the planet's surface, broken up by massive continents covered in verdant forests and sprawling grasslands. It was like looking at a pristine Earth, untouched by human influence. Magnificent, isn't it? Rigel said, stepping up beside Jacob. I never thought I'd see another world so similar to our ancestral home. Jacob nodded, still marvelling at the sight. It's incredible. Hard to believe a place like this exists out here. Rigel turned to his crew, his voice filled with excitement. All right, everyone, let's get to work. I want scout teams on the surface as soon as possible. We need to find the best location for our colony. As the Elysian scouts prepared to teleport down to the planet, Jacob couldn't shake a feeling of unease. Something about this seemingly perfect world felt off, though he couldn't quite put his finger on it. Hours later, Jacob's concerns proved to be well-founded. Reports from the surface came in, describing strange malfunctions in the scout's equipment. Communication systems crackled with static before going dead, and several scouts failed to check in at their designated times. Rigel, his face lined with worry, turned to Jacob and Zaphod. I need you two to go down there and find out what's happening. If there's a threat to our people, we need to know about it. Jacob and Zaphod materialized on the planet's surface, the lush jungle surrounding them alive with the calls of exotic animals. They set off in the direction of the last known location of the missing scouts, pushing through the dense undergrowth. As they trekked deeper into the jungle, Jacob noticed something strange. The plants and animals around them seemed to be subtly different from those on Earth, with colors and shapes that were just slightly off. It was as if the entire ecosystem had evolved along a different path. Suddenly Zephod stopped, his eyes wide. Jacob, look at this. So ahead of them, hidden beneath a canopy of towering trees, stood the ruins of an ancient city. Massive structures of a strange, iridescent metal rose from the jungle floor, their surfaces covered in intricate alien designs. Jacob and Zaphod approached cautiously, their weapons at the ready. As they stepped into the heart of the ruins, a group of tall, slender beings emerged from the shadows. Their skin was translucent, glowing with an inner light, and their eyes shone like stars. Welcome, travellers one of the beings said, its voice melodic and haunting. We are the Watchers, the last of our kind. The Watchers led Jacob and Zaphod deeper into the ruins, revealing the tragic history of their civilization. They spoke of the Void, a malevolent entity that had consumed their people, feeding on their life force until only a handful remained. And now with your arrival, the Void has awakened once more, the lead Watcher said, its eyes filled with sorrow. It senses the life on your ship, the potential for new prey. You must flee this place before it is too late. Jacob and Zaphod exchanged a look of horror, realizing the gravity of the situation. They raced back through the jungle, desperate to warn Rigel and the others of the impending danger. But as they approached the Celestia, they saw that it was already too late. A swirling vortex of darkness had enveloped the ship, tendrils of inky black energy lashing out at the hull. The void had found its new target. Jacob's mind raced, trying to find a solution. He thought back to the Watcher's words, to the advanced technology he had seen in the ruins. There had to be a way to fight back against the void, to save his friends and the Elysian crew. As the void's attack intensified, Jacob knew he had to act fast. Using his knowledge of Elysian technology and the information gleaned from the Watchers, he began to formulate a desperate plan. It was a long shot, but it was their only hope. Jacob turned to Zaphod, his eyes blazing with determination. We need to get back to the ship. I have an idea, but we don't have much time. Zaphod nodded, gripping his weapon tightly. Together they charged towards the Celestia, ready to face the void head on. The fate of the Elysian crew, and perhaps the entire galaxy, rested on their shoulders. Jacob raced back to the Celestia, his heart pounding as he explained his desperate plan to Rigel and the others. The fusion drive, the same technology he had repaired mere days ago, could be overloaded to create a massive electromagnetic pulse. 
the EMP would disrupt the void's energy structure, tearing it apart. But the cost would be high. The pulse would also destroy the Celestia itself, killing everyone still on board. Rigel's face fell as the weight of the decision settled on his shoulders. To save the colony and the planet, he would have to sacrifice his ship and crew. With a heavy heart, he gave the order. Evacuate to the surface, Rigel commanded, his voice cracking. Jacob, Zaphod, and any volunteers will stay behind to initiate the EMP. As the escape pods launched, Jacob and Zaphod raced to the engine room. A handful of brave Elysians at their side. The void's tendrils lashed the ship, the hull groaning under the assault. We have to hurry, Jacob shouted over the chaos, his hands flying over the controls. Zaphod worked beside him, sweat pouring down his face as they pushed the fusion drive beyond its limits. The reactor pulsed with dangerous energy, the containment field straining. Suddenly a power surge ripped through the room. Zaphod screamed as electricity arced through his body, slamming him into the wall. He crumpled, unmoving. Zaphod, Jacob cried, but he couldn't stop. The void was closing in seconds from engulfing the ship. With a final desperate effort, Jacob input the last command. The fusion drive surged, the reactor going critical. A blinding flash of light erupted from the Celestia, the EMP blasting outward in a shockwave of raw power. The void recoiled as the pulse slammed into it, its shadowy form unraveling. It let out an unearthly shriek as it dissipated, torn apart by the electromagnetic maelstrom. But the Celestia, caught at the epicenter, stood no chance. The ship disintegrated, reactor breaching in a cataclysmic explosion. Jacob, Zaphod, and the remaining crew vanished in the searing light, their atoms scattered to the cosmic winds. On the surface, Rigel and the surviving Elysians watched in horror, as a second sun bloomed in the sky, the Celestia's death throes burning bright against the void of space. Rigel fell to his knees, the magnitude of Jacob's sacrifice hitting him like a physical blow. In the days that followed, the Elysians threw themselves into building their new colony, now christened Jacobus, in honor of the human who had given everything to save them. As they worked, the memory of Jacob's courage and selflessness drove them forward. Rigel, haunted by the loss of his friend, found himself changed by the experience. The universe, he now realized, was far more vast and dangerous than he had ever imagined. The Elysians, for all their advanced technology, still had much to learn. As the story drew to a close, the Elysian colony stood as a testament to the sacrifices made and the bonds forged between two disparate species. The future was uncertain, but one thing was clear. The legacy of Jacob Miller would endure, a shining example of the heights to which both humans and Elysians could rise when they stood together against the darkness. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.